Welcome to Module 5 of Live Success Now. This is the final module, and it would be easy to come to the conclusion that you are now at the conclusion of this masterclass, that when this video ends, that you are at the end of this course. However, you are just getting started. The title of this module is Making It Real. Making what you have learned here real for you will only happen through your ongoing application by putting it all into practice. Going forward from here, it will be up to you to enact your life master plan. Knowledge only becomes valuable through its application. Tools that are not used are not useful. It is up to you to commit to yourself that you will apply the knowledge gained here and utilize the tools that have been provided. Creating your personal success by enacting your life master plan will happen when you adopt certain habits. Let's call them success habits. We will get to those success habits in a while. But first I want to provide you with an understanding of how you have gotten the habits you currently have and how you can take on those new success habits successfully. We have all had the experience of recognizing that we need to make some change in our lives and making the resolution to make that change and then taking steps to enact that change and then within a short period of time falling back into our habitual patterns of behavior. Just think of all those New Year's resolutions that you have made over the years. There is not much point in me outlining these success habits for you if you do not have the tools to successfully integrate them into your life. We are all creatures of habit. Some of our habits are beneficial, and some are, sadly, detrimental. We begin the practice of taking on or forming habits on our very first day on planet Earth. Habit formation is the process by which a behavior, through regular repetition, becomes automatic or habitual. During infancy and early childhood, most of our habits are taught to us. Our childhood behavior is trained and ingrained by external forces, forces like parents and teachers and television and digital devices and environmental feedback. After early childhood, we learn to start to take on each new habit with a conscious choice, fueled by a desire for a specific outcome. We decide, for some personal reason, to engage in a behavior and through repetition learn to do something that can be done on automatic pilot. For example, that is how and why you learned how to ride a bicycle. We do that again and again and again until we have this whole set of habits. And now, as adults, the majority of our daily behavior is based on habit. Some behavioral scientists even claim that 90% of our daily activities are determined by habit. Also, most of the skills we have in life are intentional habits we have taken on. Again, a habit or skill begins with the conscious choice to engage in a behavior which, through repetition, becomes an unconscious or subconscious behavior. For example, a skilled classical pianist does not consciously think about what piano keys to push when playing 
Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5. But in originally learning how to read music and play the piano, every note played was done with conscious intent. And slowly, through repetition, a habit was formed so that it became an unconscious skill that can be performed with ease. It is exactly the same process you used to learn how to read and write. You learned each letter, learned how they formed words, learned how to recognize those words and what they meant. And then you learned how to read a book and to write down your own thoughts. And it is the same way that you are going to learn to adopt these success habits, the skills you need to enact your life master plan. A habit, then, is any routine of behavior that is repeated regularly until it tends to occur subconsciously. But habits are more than just behavioral patterns. According to the American Journal of Psychology, a habit is a fixed way of thinking, willing, or feeling acquired through previous repetition of a mental experience. In other words, habits are ingrained ways of thinking, feeling, deciding, and behaving or performing physical tasks. Most of us can readily identify our behavioral habits simply by examining the things we do each day with a certain measure of honesty and insight. But it takes considerably more insight to identify our habitual ways of thinking and feeling. Most of us tend to not think very much about our patterns of thinking. So most of our repetitive and habitual ways of thinking are unconscious and unexamined. Our patterns of thinking are also more deeply habitual than our behaviors because they were mostly taken on without original intent. They were acquired through osmosis. We absorbed them from our parents, peers, culture, and education. And we did that mostly without any filtering through conscious examination of the validity or value of that way of thinking. Since the results that show up in our lives are largely determined by our actions or habitual behaviors, it can easily be understood that success is produced by having success habits. And yes, we will get to those success habits, those behaviors that produce the results we aspire to have in a few moments. But since our behaviors are mostly determined by our ingrained or habitual thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and intentions, let's first touch on those core elements of our beingness. In order to stress the importance of first examining and then learning to change those habitual ways of thinking, I will repeat here what I said earlier. That tape loop of continuous, repetitive, habitual self-talk is how we describe reality to ourselves. And if that self-described reality picture is about scarcity, lack, and limitation, instead of abundance, wealth, and prosperity, or if that self-described and continuously reinforced reality picture asserts that the external material world of effects is more fundamental than the internal mental causal world, then your ability to create the success you desire will be constrained and limited. In order to create your success with more ease and facility, your established ideals must become 
preeminent. They must become at least as real in your mind as any already existent thing, and they must become the focus of your will, your thoughts, your passion, your attention, and your activity. Okay, let's simplify it all to say that those unconscious, repetitive, habitual thought patterns are automatic programs that are running 24-7 in your subconscious mind. Once we understand that these programs are responsible for producing much of the results we have in life, we can see that if we want bigger, better results, we have to upgrade our programming. In a few minutes, I am going to suggest some specific things you can use on yourself, by yourself, to upgrade your programming. They are simply tools for self-improvement and self-actualization. And, as with any tool, they can be used crudely or elegantly. For example, any untrained laborer can use a hammer and chisel to break apart a piece of marble to produce a pile of rubble. Michelangelo used a hammer and chisel to create the masterpiece of the Statue of David from a raw piece of marble. Same tools, same material, two different results. Why? the untrained laborer was just randomly chipping away at the stone in the same way that many people just chip away at the raw potential we all have. Michelangelo envisioned a creation. He had an ideal in mind. That is why I have asked you to create specific ideals so that you can use the tools you have to create a masterpiece, your life master plan. As I said in Module 4, your mind is your creative tool. Like any tool, it can be used crudely or skillfully. The creative aspects of mind are your tool set. They are your imagination your conceptualization, your idealization, your visualization, your patterns of thinking, conscious and subconscious, that repetitive self-talk is how you describe reality to yourself. So, you want to learn to take control of your thinking, to focus your thoughts on your ideals, to place your attention on your life master plan, and on your day-to-day -day goals. The more in tune you become with your core values, your ideals, and your life master plan, the greater vibrational harmony you will bring into your life, and the more harmonious energy you will broadcast. That will serve to attract the elements that supply the abundance, success, and fulfillment you desire to have. Deciding to enact these things will not just bring purpose and meaning to your life, it will engage the infinite because you have brought yourself into alignment with the basic underlying creative principles of the universe. Also in Module 4, I spoke about your three layers of self. The experiencer who feels responds to environmental feedback provided by sensory input about already existent things in the external world. The observer, who thinks, analyzes, and theorizes about the information obtained from already existent things in the external world. And the creator, who imagines, envisions, and conceptualizes something that is not yet existent in the external world. Your process of going through this course involved all three of those aspects of self. 
you had the experience of watching each video, listening to the ideas I presented to you, and then whatever responses arose because of any pre-existing mental programs you have running, you came to some conclusions and judgments about the meaning and value of what I offered for your consideration. When you have also completed the exercises in Module 2 and 3, you will have engaged the creator aspect of self to envision a future reality and will have created a plan to bring that vision forth and make it real for you. I have also previously spoken about two aspects of mind, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And in a few minutes, I will talk a bit more about using the conscious mind to inform and entrain the subconscious mind to work more to your benefit instead of to your detriment. But right now, I would like to provide you with an enhanced concept of your mind by suggesting that you actually have three aspects of mind. Let's start by using that familiar metaphor, the iceberg. I am sure that you have heard this story before. The part of the iceberg we normally see is that part that is floating above the water. It is 10% of the whole iceberg and is analogous to the conscious mind. And the 90% that is submerged in the ocean is analogous to the subconscious mind. And for most, that is where the story ends, with an understanding that the subconscious mind is the larger part of our total mind and has more attributes, capabilities, and depth than the conscious mind and, as a consequence, has more control over our lives. But I want to expand on that story for you to draw a broader metaphor. I want you to continue to visualize that iceberg as being synonymous with your mind. Now ask yourself, what is that iceberg made out of? Ice, of course, crystallized H2O, frozen water. What is it floating in? H2O, water. In Module 1, I spoke of your consciousness as being the same in kind and quality as universal consciousness. Now, looking at this iceberg, we can see how that is true. For the sake of this metaphor, I am calling that whole vast ocean in which the iceberg floats the supraconscious mind. It is your greater self. It is your source. It is the same as you. Allow me to explain. Where did that iceberg come from? It calved off from an ice field. Say, for example, the Greenland glacial ice sheet. Where did that ice come from? From centuries of falling snow. And where did that snow come from? Evaporated ocean water. So, the iceberg and the ocean are one and the same thing. They are simply different states of being. They may appear to be separate things, but they are not. Your individual mind, conscious and subconscious, arises from and is made up of the same essence as universal mind. So we can see that universal mind is, in fact, your own supra-conscious mind. There is a lot more depth to this discussion, but there is no need to complicate it. For me to make my point, I am going to keep it simple. For the sake of this understanding, I want you to gain here. These three definitions are very simplistic. The conscious mind is first and most importantly the aspect of self that has the capacity to choose. 
Being above the water line, apparently separate from the ocean, it can perceive the external world and take in information about that external world. It then filters, interprets, and prioritizes that information and then stores it in the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is the decision maker. The subconscious mind is the creature of habit, and those habits determine our outcomes. But the conscious mind has the ability to choose to take on new productive habits and replace the old, non-productive, or even detrimental habits. The job of the conscious mind is to determine what is real and what is valuable and what is desired. Your subconscious mind is, first of all, the responsible party for the autonomic functions of the body like heartbeat, digestion, perspiration, hormonal activity, breathing, etc. And it is a darn good thing that your conscious mind does not have to control all that complicated stuff or you would not survive five minutes. Additionally, your subconscious mind provides all your conditioned responses and your unconscious skills. For example, when you take a road trip, you can drive for hours without actually consciously thinking about how to drive a car. And that pianist can play that tune without consciously thinking about what keys to hit or which notes to play. Your subconscious mind is also the repository of memory and all those absorbed, assumed, and ingrained patterns of thinking, feeling, and behavior that it originally got from the filtering, interpreting, and prioritizing input of the conscious mind. And this is exactly where you want to make those changes so that you can enhance the quality of your life and create that success you desire to have. You want to change those subconscious habits of thinking and feeling. The supraconscious mind is that aspect of self where transcendent experiences originate, where you connect to the infinite, where your consciousness and universal consciousness merge where the source of your creative power resides. It is your higher self that calls you to self-realization and self-actualization. It is the ocean of pure beingness from which you arose and in which you float. Now, allow me to insert this personal story here. In June of 2018, I traveled to the Canadian province of Newfoundland. It was the one province I had not previously visited. So when one of my sisters called me up and suggested we go, I agreed. In the end, five of my six sisters, three of their spouses, and I made the trip, and we had a great time. In addition to our hiking and other exploring, we went out on a big old repurposed fishing trawler to see some icebergs. It was totally amazing to see these incredible things close up. The one in the picture I am about to show you towered 150 feet above, above sea level. It was about 300 feet wide and 400 feet long. And, of course, that was just the 10% above the waterline. It was big. We motored around it several times, gazing in awe <laughs> and taking pictures. One of my sisters noticed and captured a photo of this face on one face of that iceberg. So, I want to complete this metaphor with this image. The conscious mind gazes out upon the external world. The subconscious mind 
although much greater in size than the conscious mind, does not perceive the external world directly. It only knows what the conscious mind has told it previously and is telling it presently. It is blind to the world above the waterline and only knows what it is told about it by the experiencer aspect of self filtered through the observer aspects, evaluations, and judgments. Now I have one last iceberg-related question for you. What controls the direction of the iceberg as it moves within the ocean? To some degree, the direction of the drift of the iceberg is influenced by the wind currents that blow upon the 10% that is above the water. But the major influence is the ocean currents that blow upon the 90% that is below water. Likewise, our subconscious mind influences our movement through life more than our conscious mind does. However, unlike the iceberg, our conscious mind has the ability to choose, and that power shapes the subconscious, and the shape of the subconscious then determines the direction we move, aided by the currents of the universal creative principles of the supraconscious mind. So while we can see that although the subconscious has enormous power over our behavior, we can also see that we can use our conscious mind to determine much of what the subconscious does. This power of choice is the power of the conscious mind to direct the subconscious mind. You are not an iceberg adrift in the North Atlantic Ocean at the mercy of environmental conditions and circumstances like ocean currents. You are a conscious and volitional human being, and you can determine the direction that your life travels. You get to choose. You get to decide what input to provide your subconscious mind. So, Let's talk about some ways to do that. Let me affirm it once again. That subconscious self-talk that runs non-stop in the background is how you describe reality to yourself. So if you want to change that reality picture, you want to change that self-talk. One of the tools you can use to do that is Subliminal induction via brainwave entrainment. Wow, eh? That may sound complicated, but it is not. It is simply the repetition of the affirmations about what you idealize combined with meditative or trance-like states of mind. What happens is that the conscious mind chooses to engage in some practice in order to open a doorway to greater aspects of self. There is a science behind it all, the purposeful change of brainwave activity using certain techniques. Using sound to produce hypnagogic states is not a new technology. The use of drumming and chanting to produce trance states is as old as recorded history. These trance states can provide direct access to the subconscious and supraconscious aspects of mind. What it all boils down to is that you can instruct your subconscious mind more intentionally and effectively when you are in a meditative or trance-like state. If you want, you can think of it as kind of a self-hypnosis, or you can think of it as metaprogramming your own biocomputer. It does not matter what or how you think of it, it works. That is all you need to know. Shamans, seers, mystics, and psychological experts have all explored various ways and processes 
to access and inform the subconscious mind. But you do not have to figure out by yourself how to design a process for yourself. I have provided two sources of already created and proven ways of entrainment for you to use. And they are located at lesliefigure.com slash brainwaves. There are some other resources on that webpage for you as well. Another tool you can use is visualization combined with emotional charge. The old expression that a picture is worth a thousand words is true. True because the subconscious mind does not create those mental files in words. It creates them in images, and the importance of those mental files is determined by the associated emotional attachments. That is why any traumatic experience is so ingrained and so hard to overcome. It is not so much because of the size of the original experience, but because of the highly emotional attachment to the image of that past experience that causes it to be so important and such a controlling factor in your life. Big pain equals big reality picture. But this is also true for non-traumatic, life-changing experiences. For example, I will always, always remember being present for the birth of my daughter. Big joy equals important file. And it can also be true for any imagined experience, if that envisioned experience has a strong emotional attachment. Here is the critical thing you need to understand. The subconscious cannot differentiate between a real-life event and an imagined, emotionally charged visualization. That is why memories are malleable and are not necessarily true or accurate historical records. Here is what you can do to imprint your success on your subconscious mind. Create mental pictures of the ideals you have set for yourself. Attach to those mental pictures an intense positive emotion, passion, gratitude, the joy of experiencing the reality of those ideals. Make it a habit when you review your ideals and goals to affirm their reality and to visualize them and to feel how wonderful it is to own those ideals. Make it a habit to feel the passion and the gratitude you have for your ideals. So, now that we're back at the subject of habits, let's dig into those proven success habits that you will want to develop. Now, I want to stress here that these habits I am reporting to you are not the product of my own imagination. They are the results of multiple studies done about the lives of highly successful people. So let's take a look at what those studies say about the behavioral patterns of successful people. Success habit number one. They step away from the herd mentality and set and follow their own goals. 90% of highly successful people report that they have a long-term plan and have specific written goals, which they refer to daily. Number two, they actively envision their own future. They use their imagination to dream about their ideal life. They understand the power of creative visualization. And about 50% keep a success journal or create vision boards. Number three, they hang out with other successful people. 
This provides a positive feedback loop and reinforces good behavior. Number four, they seek feedback from mentors. And it is worth noting that 93% of self-made millionaires credit their mentors with their successes. Number five, they help others succeed. Because of the value they receive from having a mentor, most also become mentors to other people who are success-minded. Remember the principle of reciprocity? Number six, 88% report that they read at least 30 minutes per day. And what they read is worth noting. They read biographies. They read history. They read technical information related to their business or profession. And they read personal development literature. They seldom read for entertainment or distraction. And they seldom watch TV. Number seven. 76% say they get at least 30 minutes of physical exercise each day. Physical well-being is as important as mental and emotional well-being. Number eight, about two-thirds say that they get six to eight hours sleep at night and they get up early. Number nine, they set aside 15 to 30 minutes a day for self-reflection meditation, or contemplation, and they usually do this in the morning. And number 10, over 75% believe that there is a higher power and that this higher power is desirous of their success in life. Modeling those who have already created success is a really good way to create your own success. So I suggest you seriously consider taking on those same habits. There are many studies about how long it takes to take on a new habit, and there is no clear answer. Apparently, according to these various studies, it can take as little as 21 days of repetition and as long as 250 days. However, I believe that the most motivated people can successfully take on a new habit within 45 days of focused repetition if they do one thing. And that one thing is gain agreement of the subconscious mind in advance. In other words, do it with permission instead of by imposition. Imposition only serves to create resistance. Permission creates compliance and assistance. If you seek to impose new habits on your subconscious without permission, it will resist because it is a creature of habit. However, if you gain permission, it will work with you to entrain those new habits. And here is how to gain that permission and agreement from your subconscious mind. You can do it right now with me. And you can use this any time you wish to take on new self-talk, new habits, new agreements with that deeper aspect of self. Okay. We will begin this permission-seeking process by focusing our attention on our breathing. Breathing is the gateway to your greater self. Let me explain. Most of the time, as I mentioned, breathing is not done consciously. It is performed automatically by the subconscious mind. So, when we decide to breathe consciously, we open a gateway to the subconscious. That is why any meditation exercise or creative visualization is begun with conscious breathing. It opens 
that direct communication channel with the subconscious mind. Okay, let's do this. Find someplace comfortable and quiet to sit. Close your eyes. Take in a nice, long, slow, deep, life-giving breath. Hold it for a moment, and as you let it out, allow yourself to relax your body. Feel the tensions dissolve. And then take in another nice, long, slow, deep, life-enhancing breath. Hold it for a moment, and as you let it out, Allow yourself to relax your mind. Feel the mental activity slow down. And again, take another nice, long, slow, deep, life-empowering breath. Hold it for a moment. And as you let it out, allow yourself to open up to the fuller sense of yourself that includes the subconscious and superconscious aspects of self. And once more, take another nice, long, slow, deep, life-giving breath. Hold it for a moment. And when you let it out, begin a conversation with your deeper aspects of self. It could go something like this. Breathe. Let these words that follow be your thoughts. Hi there. I wish to talk to that innermost part of myself, my subconscious mind. I know that most of the time I just take you for granted, but I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for all the things you do continuously for me. I know that you have my best in mind all the time. You keep my body functioning. You make it possible for me to get through each day, mostly without any conscious input from me, the conscious mind. Thank you for keeping all those great memories. Thank you for accepting and maintaining my thoughts, visions, and good feelings. I would like now to say to you that I have decided to become a bigger, better, bolder version of myself, and I would like to ask you to help me to do that. I am so appreciative of the way that you have assisted me all these years by giving me habitual ways to deal with with the complexities of life. I wish now to incorporate some new habits that I firmly believe will enhance the quality of my life. And I ask your permission and assistance to take on those new habits. I respect that you, my subconscious mind, are so much more powerful than me, my conscious mind. I need your help in creating this better version of us. Please assist me by reminding me to integrate the following new habits into my daily life. First, I choose now to begin every day with an expression of gratitude for all the blessings I have in life, starting with the fact that I have each new day to be alive to be creative, and to be contributory, to follow my dreams, to pursue my goals and ideals, to create success, to live my life master plan. Be sure to limit this time to around 15 minutes. I know it is so easy to get caught up in feeling thankful for the abundance of blessings I have, and the next thing you know, an hour has slipped by. Second, I will follow this up by reminding myself of my core values and affirming to myself that I will live this day in accordance with those core values. Third, 
I will then review my to-do list and plan my day by prioritizing the tasks I have set for myself. And this is not about time management. I cannot manage time, I recognize that. But I can, with your help, manage myself. I recognize that everyone has the same 1440 minutes in each day. It is my only non-renewable resource. I will use it wisely by scheduling myself. Planning each day at the beginning of each day helps ensure that I live each day on purpose, and I know that you want that too. Fourth, I commit to getting some physical and mental nutrition into myself before getting busy with my daily tasks. I will read something inspirational or motivational while I am drinking that morning smoothie or eating that nutritional breakfast. Fifth, I will then get focused and get busy enacting those things I have set as today's priorities. Sixth, at least once during each day, I will take the time to stop, get centered, do a little meditation or spend some time in nature, and while I am relaxed, calm and centered, I will, with your help, remind myself why I do what I do, what my life master plan outlines for me, and how wonderful it feels to live in that reality picture. 7. I also choose to set aside 20 to 30 minutes each evening to plug into those brainwave entrainment videos suggested for me over at lesliefeager.com slash brainwaves, or I will take those 20 to 30 minutes to sit back and visualize my success in full passion and gratitude mode. Eighth, at the end of my day, I will pull out my ta-da list and review what I have accomplished with this day, and I will celebrate that success. And then I will review what is on schedule for tomorrow. And ninth, and perhaps the most important thing I will do all day is that what I will do in the last few minutes before I go to sleep and turn everything over to you my subconscious mind. I will express my gratitude for all the things that you are in the process of creating for me. I know that this is the most effective way to inform you, my subconscious mind, to believe in the reality of our ideals. I will fall asleep with those thoughts of gratitude on my mind and with those feelings of thankfulness in my heart in full confidence that we together are in complete accordance and will work harmoniously to effectuate the ideals I have set for myself. Thank you. All right, back to the here and now. So here is the plan I want to suggest for you. For the next 45 days, you will begin each day with an expression of gratitude and a review and affirmation of your core values. Number two, immediately after that, you will review your to-do list and prioritize your time. Plan your day. Number three, then you will get some physical and mental nutrition into yourself. It is self-care time. Number four, and then it becomes performance time, and you will get busy doing the things that you have set for yourself. You have made your plan, now you're going to work your plan. Number five, once a day, stop, get relaxed, and remind yourself why you do what you are doing. Focus on your ideals. Visualize them. Number six, once a day, every day, connect with a mentor and or 
with those that you are mentoring. Number seven, near the end of the day, plug into personal creative visualization or spend 20 to 30 minutes in that brainwave entrainment, which is so effective. Number eight, at the end of the day, review your to-da list and celebrate your successes. And number nine, fall asleep in gratitude for all the things that you are in the process of creating. That is your life master plan. At the end of this 45 day commitment, I ask you to report back to me what changes have taken place in your life. I fully expect that the changes that take place will be a pleasant surprise. My intention in creating this masterclass was to provide you with both the opportunity to envision a bigger, bolder, more successful and fulfilling future and to give you the tools for you to use to be able to create that future of your own envisioning. We started this journey together in Module 1, talking about the inside secrets of success. And I reminded you there that everything that has ever happened to you is an historical artifact, and only that which you currently hold in mind or place your attention on is your current reality. Whether that is your self-image or the image of anything else that you have created in your imagination, your ability to conceptualize and idealize is therefore your power to create your current reality picture. In Module 2, we started the process of creating your life master plan, and I reminded you that you are a creative, causative agent within an ever-involving universe within which enormous potentialities exist that are limited only by your own imagination. In Module 3, where we began scripting your own success story, I reminded you that any new file created in imagination and stored in mind is as real as any other files you may have stored in mind, especially if you have attached a strong emotional current to that file. In Module 4, Engaging the Infinite, we looked at the creative principles of the universe and how you can harmonize yourself and enhance your creative power by thinking, feeling, and acting in congruity with your core values, your ideals, and with these universal creative principles or natural laws. And now, here in Module 5, we examined how to take on those success habits that will bring you into harmony and thereby facilitate the effectualization or manifestation of your life master plan. Those mental habits and the resulting physical habits are the internal factors that you have the ability to control because your conscious mind has the freedom and the power to choose to intentionally imprint your subconscious mind with specific programs that it will run automatically to support your expressed ideals. Your choice, your power, now go create. Okay, that is the end of Module 5 and the beginning of your new, bigger, bolder, more successful, and fulfilling life. I want to express my extreme gratitude to you for going on this journey with me, and I look forward to hearing about your individual success stories. I celebrate your success with you. I will see you on the path. Ciao for now.